In this video, we are going to begin Proposition 3.6.2 on the properties of the directional derivative and the gradient. We'll do the first and the second properties in this video, as well as a little remark. And in the next video, we'll do properties 3 and 4. So let us begin with the first property. So let f be a function of several variables that's differentiable at a point a. The maximum instantaneous rate of change of f at a is the norm of the gradient of f at a, and the minimum instantaneous rate of change of f at a is the negative norm of the gradient of f at a. Proof. Let's remember that the directional derivative of f at a is exactly the instantaneous rate of change of f at a in the direction of some given vector u hat. We also had from a previous video that this directional derivative may be calculated as the dot product of the gradient with u hat. We need to remember from our vector geometry that when you've got the dot product of two vectors v and w, that can be calculated as the norm of v times the norm of w times cos theta, where cos theta or theta is the angle between those two vectors, which means that the directional derivative can be calculated as the norm of the gradient times the norm of u hat times the cosine of theta. But since u hat is a unit vector, this can be expressed simply as the norm of the gradient times the cosine of theta. Now we know that the cosine function is bounded. It's between minus 1 and 1, which means that the negative norm of the gradient is less than or equal to the norm of the gradient times the cosine of theta is less than or equal to the norm of the gradient. What's right inside this inequality is the directional derivative. So the directional derivative is less than or equal to the norm of the gradient and it's greater than or equal to the negative norm of the gradient, which means that the maximum of the directional derivative at any given vector u hat is the norm of the gradient at point A. And the minimum value of the directional derivative, which is the instantaneous rate of change, so we're talking about the maximum instantaneous rate of change and the minimum the minimum value is negative norm of the gradient. Property 2. The maximum instantaneous rate of change at f of f at a, which we know has this value, occurs in the direction of the gradient. Right? Part 1 said that this is the maximum value, but it didn't tell us where to find it. Part 2 tells us where you'll find it. You'll find it when u hat points in the direction of the gradient. And the minimum occurs when u hat points in the direction of the negative gradient. So let's take this relationship from part 1. We know that we can write the directional derivative at any point A as the norm of the gradient times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the gradients and the vector u hat where we're taking the instantaneous rate of change. We want to show when the directional derivative is at its maximum value, that u hat points 
in the same direction as the gradient. And when in the directional derivative is at its minimum, we want to show that u hat points in the opposite direction. So this we can examine in two cases. The directional derivative here is going to be equal to the norm of the gradient, which we remember from part one is the maximum value that the directional derivative can take. It will be equal to that maximum value when the cosine is equal to 1. If cos theta is equal to 1, it's because theta is equal to 0. And if our angle theta here is equal to 0, that is telling us exactly that the vector u hat points in the direction of the gradient. Looking at this same equation in another possibility, this equation gives us that the dir directional derivative will be equal to negative norm of the gradient, which we recall from part one is the minimum value that the directional derivative can take. And that will be true when cos theta is equal to minus one. If cos theta is minus one, then theta is 180 degrees. So if theta is 180 degrees, then our vector u hat is pointing in the opposite direction to the gradient, which means u hat points in the direction of negative gradient. So what property two is saying is that the direction, if we take u hat, right, direction that we are examining the rate of change, if we take u hat in the direction of the gradient, we are going to get the maximum possible rate of change for this function at point A. So this remark builds on that. It says because the gradient of f points in the direction of the maximum instantaneous rate of change at a given point, that's our property too, the direction of the gradient is said to be the direction of steepest ascent. Steepest because it's the maximum ascent because the function is growing, right? The function f, the maximum instantaneous rate of change the norm of the gradient is a positive value. The function is growing at that point at its maximum possible rate of change. So the gradient is the direction of steepest ascent at any given point. In the next video, we'll continue proposition 3.6.2 with property 3 and property 4.